Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about linear transformations. So we've seen linear transformations incognito all the time until now. Um, we've played around with matrices, matrices multiplying vectors say in Rn and producing vectors in Rm. Um, so really the language of linear transformations only provides a, a nicer framework when we want to analyze linear, linear operations on more abstract vector spaces, like the one we have in this problem here. We're going to work with the, uh, the space of 2 by 2 matrices, and we're going to analyze the operation. We have the matrix A, and we produce its, trans its transpose. OK. so. Please take a few uh, minutes to try the pro problem on your own and come back. Hi again. OK. So the first question we need to ask ourselves uh, is, indeed, why is T a linear operator? So what are the abstract properties that a linear operator satisfies? Well, what happens when T acts on the sum of two matrices, A and B? So it produces the matrix, the transpose of A plus B. But we know that this is A transpose plus B transpose. And so this is exactly TA plus TB. OK, so the, transfor the transformation that we're analyzing takes like the sum of uh, two matrices into the sum of, the of their transformations. OK? Similarly, it takes a multiple of a transformation into the multiple of the transformations. Of, yeah, the, the, so it takes yeah, the matrix C times A to C times A transpose, which is C T of A. OK, so it is a linear operator. Now, can we figure out what its inverse is? Well, what, what does the transpose do? It takes a column, right, and flips it into a row. So what happens if we apply the operation once again? Well, it's going to take the row and turn it back down to the column. So applying the, tra the tra uh, transformation twice, um, we, we come back to the original situation. So therefore, t squared is the identity. And from this, we infer that the inverse is the transformation itself. OK. Now, this was part one. Part two will compute the matrix of the linear transformation in the following two bases. So the first basis, basis is, in fact, I mean, it is the standard basis for the space of two by two matrices. And the way we compute um, the matrix, we first compute what T does to each of the basis elements. OK? So T of V1, let's go back. So it here. So T takes the transpose of this matrix. And, but we see that the transpose of 1, 0, 0, 0 is 1, 0, 0, 0. So it's a symmetric matrix. So T of V1 is V1. What about T of V2? Again, we come back here. So this one comes here, 0 comes here. And so we actually get V3, right? So T of V2 is V3. Similarly, T of V3 is V2. And finally, T of V4, well, V4 
is a symmetric ma matrix as well. So the transpose doesn't change it. OK. So what, yeah, now we, write, we encode this into a matrix in the following way. Essentially, yeah, the first column will, yeah, the first column will uh, tell us how T of V1 um, is expressed as a linear combination of the basis element. Um, well, in this case, it's just V1. So it's going to be 1 times V1 plus 0, V2 plus 0, V3 plus 0, V4. T of V2 is V3. So we have 0, 0, 1, 0. T of V3 is 0, V1, 1, V2, 0, V3, 0, V4. And T of V4 is 0, V1, 0, V2, 0, V3, plus 1, V4. OK. So we written down the matrix of the linear transformation T in the standard basis. And um, you can check that this is exactly what we want. Say, we can, yeah, let's, let's see what this, so yeah. Let's see what the representa representation of, the mat of some matrix, say 1, 2, 3, 4, in this standard basis is. It's the vector 1, 2, 3, 4. T takes this to its um, transpose, 1, 3, 2, 4. So this, in the basis, uh, is represented as 1, 3, 2, 4, right? And it's not hard to see that mt, when multiplies, when mt multiplies this vector, we get exactly this vector. OK. So we'll pause for a bit so that I erase the board. And we're going to return with the representation of t in the basis of w1, w2, w3, and w4. OK, so let's now compute the matrix of t in the basis w1, w2, w3, and w4. We play the same game. We look at how t acts on each of the basis vectors. So t of w1. Well, W1 is a symmetric matrix, so T of W1 is W1. Um, similarly with W2 and W3. They're all symmetric. What about W4? Well, um, we see that like w the, the 1 comes down here, the negative 1 comes up here, and in the end, we just get the negative of W4. So let me, let me just write this out. We had T of W1 equal to W1. T of W2 equal to W2, T of W3 equal to W3, and T of W4 it was negative of W4. So therefore, the matrix of the linear transformation T in this basis, I'm going to call the matrix M prime of T is Fairly, it has a fairly simple expression. It's just it, it, the only non zero entries are on the diagonal, and they're precisely 1, 1, 1, and negative 1. OK. And finally, let's, let's tackle the eigenvalues slash eigenvectors issue. Well, we, I, we, We've, you've, see, you've seen what an eigenvector for a matrix is. And the idea for an eigenvalue, eigenvector for a linear transformation is virtually the same. Uh, we are looking for the vectors v and scale as lambda so, such that t of v is lambda of v. But if you guys 
look, ba look back to what we just did with W1, W2, W3, and W4, you'll see precisely that W1, W2, and W3 are eigenvectors for t with eigenvalue 1, and W4 is an eigenvector for t with eigenvalue negative 1. So, yeah, we essentially, yeah, have, have solved the problem knowing a very, very nice basis in which we, can, we computed the linear transformation t. So I'll leave it at that.